forward to your presentation, and uh, we've made a contribution in your uh, name to uh, Rotary International Polio Plus as a way of saying thanks for being here today. Uh, though it may be an obligation to you uh, because of your role, it's a special thing for us. Uh, and so as we welcome you, let's uh, learn a little bit more about her. Uh, amazingly uh, energetic person with a tremendous list of achievements on behalf of Rotary International and the communities we all serve. She began her Rotary involvement in 2000 with the Rotary Club of Madison West, Town Middleton. She served on the board for many years and served as president in 2010-2011. And, and, and it has been her goal to, excuse me, to participate in all avenues of service annually. And most recently, through her efforts, she helped her community fund an ADA beer with club funding and a district grant. And she initiated a Rotary Book Club. She has been privileged uh, to be the host counselor for District 6250's Ambassadorial Scholars. She has participated in the Rotary Friendship Exchange to Essex, England in 2011 in Lagos, Nigeria in 2014. Uh, you said that they were uh, trying to pick a fourth wife for one of the members of the meeting, and uh, you lost, I guess, huh? <laughs> it was No, entering interesting cultures in, in different countries, as those of you who have traveled to other Rotary clubs know as well. Um, she has um, involved herself with the club's orphan train project, has provided opportunities to, for, to, uh, for her to travel to Peru and uh, Guatemala, visiting orphanages as well, as assisting in several medical missions to Guatemala. Doing good in the world took on new meaning when seen through the eyes of a child in need, she says. She initiated a project highlighting the original artwork of students from orphanages in 15 countries that are participating in this project. Mary currently serves on the board of the Olivera Scholarship Fund, providing scholarships to children in Olivera, Guatemala. She is particularly fond of the first object of Rotary, the development of acquaintance as an opportunity for service. Involvement in Rotary combines an appreciation of the value and importance of fellowship as we provide service to make a difference in our communities and in our world. She has worked otherwise as a financial advisor for over 25 years and is the owner of Van Hout Advisory, LLC. She's a member and past member of the Madison Estate Council. Uh, personal time is shared with her children, Chris and Val, and their families, as well as extended family and friends. Also, she spent time with Badger Football, American Players Theater, the Madison Symphony. Uh, they all compete for her time along with gardening, reading, travel, entertaining, and being a grandmother. So the question I have, Mary, is how do you find time? Uh, but she did find time for us. She's here. Welcome our district governor, Mary. Thank you, President Ellsworth, distinguished Rotarians. Congratulations to all of you new and ongoing Paul Harris Fellows. That is a fabulous accomplishment. I'm really happy to be here today to see um, uh, so many of you um, joining and expanding this wonderful fellowship. I have to tell you, last night I was in Granton, Wisconsin at the Rotary Club meeting there, um, which is a lot different than this experience. <laughs> Somebody at one point said, I think 10% of the community is there, and I thought that was a joke. Uh, but there were 25 people at the meeting, and um, uh, there are 350 people in Granton, Wisconsin, so they were really edging right on in on it. Unbelievable. Unbe actually, it was unbelievable. The, um, uh, the meal was prepared by um, the uh, current president elect mom who's well into her 80s, and it was a fabulous meal, uh, complete with three homemade pies. <laughs> and after we ate, um, those members whose number came up, I guess, uh, did the dishes. <laughs> so so I, I think that this, the, the moral of that uh, little bit of a story is that you can do a rotary in a lot of different ways. The Rotary Club of Madison, holy <coughs> smokes, so you guys do it all. Um, and your visions uh, for the future are absolutely glorious to, um, to understand and hear about. Um, I think tackling some big projects 
is well within your scope and I look forward to hearing wonderful things about um, the great successes that you've had in making a difference in the world. When we think about Rotary and our personal relationship with Rotary, different words come to mind for different people. Uh, I started to make a little list and then got, you know, wordy. Um, integrity, service, action, community involvement, giving, polio eradication, fostering, mentoring, encouragement, uh, relevance, international partnerships, friendships, fellowships. You know, when you get to be a district governor, you can be blabbing on and on and on, I guess. Um, in that list, though, I think there's one word that sometimes makes us just step back for a second. It gives us just a moment of pause. And that word, I think, is give. In our um, churches, our schools, our other civic involvements, in our families, we hear that word give, and sometimes we might just flinch for a moment and think inwardly, oh, please, don't ask me to give again. In Rotary, we're asked to give to our club's foundation, to the Rotary International Foundation, to eradicate polio now to give of our time and talent to uh, youth programs and community service projects and friendship groups and to give and to give and to give. And it's well known in Rotary, and I heard it today at your board meeting, that if you show the slightest interest or even make eye contact, <laughs> it's all over for you. You're cheering that project. I think if we turn this around for a second and think about what Rotary gives us, we can gain some perspective and some balance in this give equation. This year's theme, Be a Gift to the World. Man, do I love that theme. I, uh, Ravi did a great job picking that one out, didn't he? When you think about being a gift, the process of gifting does involve some give to it. And so I think this, uh, discussion of giving um, and getting might be appropriate. In the process of branding that, uh, rebranding that Rotary has, is going through and has for the last several years, uh, there has been defined five core values of Rotary that I think are one of the first gifts for us to consider that Rotary gives all of us. The gift of friendship. Uh, whether I'm at Madison downtown or in Granton, Wisconsin, um, the first gift that people think about in terms of their involvement with Rotary is the gift of friendship. Loretta said it today when I said, what do you love about this club? She said, man, I got friends here. Um, it is the best. The, one of the top core values in our organization is friendship. That feeling we get when we walk in a Rotary room and know that we are among people where we have a lot in common where we are friends instantly. And it's not just here in wonderful old Madison, Wisconsin. It's all through the district and all through the world. I've not walked into a Rotary gathering ever where I felt like I was a stranger. It's just the warm embrace of Rotary that wraps itself around us. So friendship, leadership. The opportunities for leadership and personal development in Rotary are endless. And if you feel an interest or need in taking advantage of that, see me later, because there could be a long list of opportunities. We like to label leadership as opportunities um, available to you to enhance your skills in that area. Integrity is a third of these core values, and I think integrity can best be, divine, uh, be uh, defined for our purposes by the four-way test. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendship? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? <laughs> Pretty good description of integrity in my mind. Service is the fourth of those areas. Service above self. That motto is not about to change, and it is really a, a huge core of who we are and why we are here together. While people join Rotary because of the service opportunities and the friendship, they ultimately stay, of course, because of the friendship and service opportunities. So there's a very, very strong link between those two. The fifth area is diversity. And I think, I think it's my favorite. 
Rotary is, um, in terms of diversity, the gift of acceptance. So whether you are tall or short, thin or chubby, uh, political, any political persuasion or apolitical, if that's possible in today's world, uh, your religious preference, sexual orientation, ethnicity, uh, wealthy or not so much, in Rotary, when we gather, we are Rotarians, first and foremost. We need to be diligent um, in having our clubs reflect the diversity of our communities so that we can grow outside of our own personal boundaries and develop greater understandings of the world around us. Uh, the entrepreneur and business uh, person, Malcolm Forbes, uh, defines it this way. Diversity is the art of thinking independently together. The art of thinking independently together. Beyond the importance of diversity in terms of our own demographics, Rotary offers us another area of diversity, and that is in the program areas that might, we might choose to become involved in. Some of us are, uh, love international programs and take advantage of as many international programs as are thrown at us. Others are um, strongly involved in youth programs or community service programs. The, the list of opportunities for diversity in your involvement in Rotary is great. My first opportunity to understand uh, being a gift to the world I think occurred as a child. I grew up in rural Appleton, Wisconsin in a little, there was a farming community called Darboy, Wisconsin. <laughs> two? We got two? Three? Three? Uh, though we didn't live on a farm, we were surrounded by farms in my extended family that uh, were farming folks. And so in the summers, um, part of what we did was be on the farm assisting with gardening and uh, chores, and particularly when hay was harvested, our services as kids were called upon. And from, a, from a child's recollection of how this happened, it seemed almost seamless then that the neighboring farm folks would gather, they would, uh, the men would be in the fields farming and, and bringing in the hay harvest and the women uh, would be uh, providing a feast for them to eat and they would work on a farm and, um, and do what was required and then they'd move on to the next farmer's fields and, and do the same process. And it seemed seamless. It seemed to require very little communication. It was part of being a, in a community. It's what you did to help your neighbors and it worked, and it worked well. After many years of illness, my mom died when I was 10, leaving my dad to fend for six kids, bless his heart. And that little unincorporated town that fewer than five of you in this room ever heard of, absolutely wrapped its arms around us. The saying, it takes a village to raise a child, I'm one of those kids that has been raised by a village, our neighbors, treated us just like their own kids. We were disciplined, unfortunately, just like their own kids. We were encouraged just like their own kids. We were all part of the same family uh, who had the same goals in terms of how life ought to proceed. One year for Christmas, my sister Cheryl and I each got a little cedar chest, You've seen those little cedar chests, filled with girl stuff and our first nylon stockings. And um, we knew that our dad didn't buy that. <laughs> um, they came to us anonymously. Somebody decided that they needed and wanted to be a gift in our life. Those sorts of experiences don't easily go away, thank goodness. Um, and, I, and I often think that it really helps uh, helps you understand the bigger picture of the world, of how a community ought to work. Today we call those random acts of kindness, which is a really great uh, description of what they are. And it's clear to me that people who uh, are involved in random acts of kindness 
uh, were involved in giving um, really have the benefit both from a giver or a receiver point of view. There's a lot to be gained from random acts of kindness. So it wouldn't be a big surprise, I guess, then to uh, learn that when I heard about the Rotary Orphan Train Project at the Rotary Club of Madison, West Town, Middleton, in uh, December of 2000, I decided, you know, that that made perfect sense. Matching donor groups, um, rotary clubs, uh, schools, churches, businesses, individuals with orphanages around the world, and that was something that just totally makes sense to me. So I became a Rotarian in the year 2000. But it really was on my first trip to Guatemala that I got the bigger picture and understood lots more about um, how Rotary and the world can and should work. <coughs> Six of us Rotarians went to uh, Guatemala, Quetzaltenango, to the uh, Hogar Luis Amigo. Uh, 20 girls there between uh, 6 and 18 living in a home smaller than the home that I live in. All of their belongings fit in a small trunk. Um, um, it was a very interesting situation to come upon. So we brought lots, what we thought was lots of money, 6,000 big U.S. American dollars with us, uh, with the goal of starting a uh, computer lab for the girls to provide the wonderful world of the Internet to them. So we um, explained to the Good Sisters um, what our uh, project plan was. And then Sister Aura Marina, small but mighty, let us know what the real deal would be. <laughs> if you've had encounters with uh, nuns, you understand exactly how that came about. Diplomatic as can be. So the real plan was um, she brought out the blueprints for a poultry barn that had already gone through a feasibility study at the Ag Department of a local university. So think about it, a poultry barn. So the girls would have food on an ongoing basis. So that they would learn the responsibility of tending for um, the poultry, um, and which um, is a marketable skill in this area. Uh, so that they could learn to develop business skills and financial skills as they sold the extras uh, produce to neighbors in the uh, community nearby. What a lesson we all learned about needs assessment that day, oh my goodness, um, and about sustainability. This was before Rotary required sustainability in anything and everything that we do. We're not interested in creating dependencies. We understand that there's much dignity to uh, be had when we give people the opportunity to take care of themselves and others. Sustainability, the return on investment with our sustainable gifts is just exponential. And I am really pleased that Rotary absolutely insists that our gifts now be sustainable and based on needs assessment. But with Rotary's help, we make a difference now every day in those girls' lives. A few years later, we put in a, um, a fruit orchard for them. Another wonderful, sustainable gift. So Rotary adds to the richness of these girls' lives every day, and I'm really looking forward to January when I go back to, um, to see them, to do another needs assessment to understand uh, how they're faring. In our communities, because of Rotary, we have playgrounds, park shelters, we help kids and those with special needs. Our food pantries are fuller. Um, our highways are cleaner. Our high school students benefit from uh, our involvement in RILA. I think Michelle had to leave. Um, and your ethics training program is one uh, to be um, not just admired, but to use widely throughout the district, hopefully. And to hear of your expanding program areas um, into um, some, some big projects, including racial equity and, um, and big international potential projects is just absolutely fabulous. Let me, let me toss in a quick word uh, about uh, Rotary in your life. Um, if Rotary is truly of value to you, 
coming here and meeting with your friends and associates is really an important part of your life. I wonder if you consider regularly sharing that gift. Have you talked to the people who are most important in your life about this wonderful gift of Rotary membership? I think we sometimes forget the people who are closest to us, our families, our friends, and don't ask them about considering joining Rotary. We talk about membership a lot, I think. Actually, somebody in, uh, at a recent meeting said, you know, all we have to do is ask. They'll come. So I hope that um, this week uh, you can ask somebody if they have an interest in learning more about Rotary. And so, to bring the circle round, when we think about the give word, about giving to Rotary, giving to our community, I hope that you balance that with the get part of what you get from Rotary uh, by virtue of your membership. Membership benefits are great and don't just involve giving, but provide wonderful opportunities for you to balance that, um, that giving piece of the equation. I'm proud to be a Rotarian because, especially in this position that I find myself in, I um, know that the next great thing that's going to happen in my life probably has a Rotary logo on it. Um, so Rotary really is a gift in my life, and I hope it is in yours as well. Today and every day, you get to decide what kind of Rotarian you want to be. So I hope tomorrow when you wake up, you decide that you want to let your light shine, last year's theme, and decide to be a gift to our world. Thank you.